Hey YouTube, today I'm taking my first long range road trip in the Tesla Model Y. It is currently 11 degrees Fahrenheit outside in Rochester and it's about 22 degrees Fahrenheit at my destination. Today I am headed to Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, just north of Milwaukee. It's a four hour drive and a 281 mile trip. I am planning on stopping about halfway through to hit up a supercharger, have some dinner. I'm currently charged up to 88%. Now, they say that with a lithium ion chemistry, you don't want to charge the battery much beyond 90% unless you absolutely have to for a road trip. In this case, I have plenty of options available for supercharging along the way. So I'd set the charge limit to 90% and that's where it currently stands. I'm just going to go here and start the uh, climate to get it nice and warm in there, get ready for me to enter and we will hit the road. Put the Model Y in drive, simply put your foot on the brake and press the right driver's stock all the way down. When I entered the highway, I put cruise control on and was startled when the wipers came on. Auto wipers are automatically enabled when cruise control or auto steer are in use. As such, I had to drive without cruise for a few minutes to give the car time to realize the windshield was dry. Eventually it did and I was able to use auto steer and cruise the rest of the way, but still, somewhat annoying bug that uh, I encountered on this trip. Ha! There you go. Alright, so we made it here with 23% of the battery, it dipped down to 22. Um, yeah, look at that, want me to watch some videos, that's nice. So far, Burned up 49 kilowatt hours since I left home. Uh, this is only a 125 kilowatt fast charger, or supercharger, I need to start calling them. So this estimated charge time is 25 minutes at this location in order for me to make it to my destination. I'm just gonna let this thing charge. I'm gonna head into the Culver's over there because why in Wisconsin eat Culver's? <laughs> It would have been very similar dining options had I decided to stop in Lake Delton. I decided I didn't want to run my brand new battery all the way down to 12%, so I pulled off the road here when I was at about 23%. It is super nice having options to charge 20 miles apart. Another 40 miles past that would have been Madison, which there would have been more superchargers there. Um, coincidentally, another Culver's is co-located with the supercharger in Lake Delton. So uh, I've been planning for Culver's tonight, and I'm going to go get my grilled cheese kids meal. Wow. Just like that, I am done charging. I simply had enough time to go in, order my food, eat it, and then grab my custard to go. And here we are, enough energy to continue on my trip. I am genuinely floored at how quick this thing charges. I mean, I am almost at where I started today. I'm at 79% right now. It feels like it's only been 20 minutes, but you can see that it just clocks up. We're charging at 63 kilowatts right now, which isn't super fast compared to what it was earlier, but this is all on a quote, slower 125 kilowatt charger. So. I don't know how much faster it would have been on the 250 kilowatt charger down in Lake Delton, but again, dramatic improvement from my Bolt. Uh, my Bolt would have probably been charging at 20, 30 kilowatts tops right now. And the fact that this thing is able to hit 150, no sweat. It did spend some time during the drive preconditioning pre the battery, keeping it warm. Um, so that probably helped, but uh, yeah, all in all, I'm just no words to describe how quick, it charged, had dinner, on the road again. This is awesome. The electric future is here. And just like that, 500 miles on Snowball. Since Moston been 147 miles, used 45 kilowatt hours with an average efficiency of 306 watt hours per mile. Now I'm learning that you should not mess with your destination as you drive because then it resets your trip counter. 
but it's really neat to see how I do compared to what it estimated. I arrived with about 21%, which is slightly the, less than the trip projection, but still uh, very close. Overall, just an incredibly smooth ride. The autopilot auto steer feature is remarkable. The sound system is incredible. And uh, man, it's just a comfortable car and all around. My girlfriend and I went to the Glendale Supercharger so I could show her the car and show her the light show. This car came with the Matrix LEDs, which was really cool to see the word Tesla printed out as a result of the Matrix LEDs in the headlights. Uh, one thing that I think we're realizing is that the one pedal driving mode, which would be L mode on a Chevy, is not able to be disabled. So for those of you that have never driven a Tesla before, it's going to be something that you have to get used to, uh, that when you take your foot off the accelerator, the car is going to apply regen brakes and come to a complete stop and hold the position or um, configure it to roll as if it were neutral or have it in creep mode, which is more like drive in a regular car. Put your foot on the brake, take it off, and it starts to move forward slowly. So right now I adjusted her profile to creep mode because it's a little bit more similar to normal vehicles, but uh, yeah, the regen braking is just something you're going to have to get used to, and I'd say that was a good job. That was a good break. I feel like that was my strong point. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, once you start driving like this, you're not going to want to go back. But there are situations where I really wish that you could turn it off. I miss in the Bolt being able to just hit the little gear shifter on the console here, because times where it's icy outside, you really want to be able to take your foot off the accelerator and not decelerate. And that's where you hit a patch of ice, freak out, take your foot off the accelerator, unless it corrects it, which this does a good job of doing that, it could, you know, land you in the ditch. So just personal preference, I'll get used to it. I'm getting better at it already. And I've been practicing throwing the car in neutral um, while I'm driving just by simply pulling up on the stock and holding it for a second. But uh, all in all, just a little tidbits about getting used to driving a Tesla. All right, we are here again at the Glendale Supercharger. This is the third time uh, charging here, but uh, this time I need to be here a little bit longer probably to top off for my trip back to Minnesota. I navigated here, so the battery preconditioned. Uh, as such, battery's a little warmer, and we're charging now at uh, about 100 kilowatts. We're going to go get some lunch. I'll monitor it in the app. We'll see how much uh, we get. It says 50 minutes remaining, so... I'm sure I'll have enough to at least make it to my halfway point after we finish with our lunch. So all in all, very easy. Just had a wonderful lunch at Five Guys and come out here and the car is at 89%. I am just baffled. It just charges so fast. I mean, we just went in, we had a nice lunch. I wasn't, well, I was thinking about it, but we weren't in a rush or anything like that, 40 minutes had our lunch and now I've got enough to get me on the road. It's remarkable how much more adaptable this is to daily life and there's really no compromising. It's just, uh, you can have your cake and eat it too. It's great. Alright, I'm on my way back to Rochester. 88% battery and 288 miles. I uh, did the quick math. That turns out to be 329 miles which is exactly at the rated range of the Tesla Model Y. I'm looking forward to kicking that auto steer on, setting the cruise control, and listening to that 14-speaker audio system. All right, here again at the Mauston, Wisconsin Supercharger. So far, great trip. I've actually done uh, pretty good from an efficiency standpoint. It's currently 40 degrees outside, but it's sunny all day, so my cabin heating has been minimal, if any. Smooth roads. Here are the stats on the trip. One thing I really like is how you can toggle between showing your percentage on your statistics and your uh, battery with simply a tap up there, you can go from percentage to miles. So you can see we consumed uh, 182 miles, which is less than 23.7 than it expected. Another cool thing that you can do 
is look at the rated range. So uh, we did about 35.8 miles more than estimated consumption. Uh, and percentage-wise, that's 10% more. Consuming a uh, little over half the battery and doing uh, about 11% worse than otherwise equates to about a 20% total drop in rated performance if you extrapolate it out through the entire battery. So that's, you know, for the temperature, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I'd say that's pretty good. Certainly better than the Bolt would have achieved. Um, one other thing I want to mention while I'm here, uh, you can see next to me I have a neighbor, and uh, Supercharging Etiquette 101, I guess I didn't follow, and I'm paying the price for that. You can see that uh, at a shared charging station like this, I'm only achieving half the charging rate that I would be if I was here by myself. There was a charger over here that uh, was in the snow. That's not always an ideal situation, so I didn't want to mess with that. Um, as such, here I am sitting with a neighbor, charging at 60. Currently it says 35 minutes needed in order to continue my trip. Obviously if the guy next to me leaves, that will change. But I might walk over again and have some more Culver's. If I ever get sick of that, there's uh, the Golden Arches over there as well. But uh, might finally have an opportunity here to check out some of the games that are on the Tesla. Lots of things to play with. I also have a pretty active comment section that uh, I can be addressing right now, but uh, shout out to one guy who mentioned uh, the paint protection film that they apply to Model Ys sold in Minnesota. I did see that on just ahead of the rear wheels that was there, and I did look for that when I took delivery, but another commenter said that there's also paint protection film on the bumper, and uh, I checked that out today in the sun, and I was able to see a very thin layer of PPF that was applied to the front bumper. So that's great news there. Obviously it protects the paint. I don't know if that's something that if it gets chipped or damaged you replace it in the, in the future or what the story is, but uh, definitely glad to see there's a little bit of added protection to this vehicle. Won't need to worry as much about uh, getting the paint chipped or anything like that happening. So far so good. We'll be hitting the road here in a little over a half hour. Now well, it's feast or famine here at the supercharger in Mauston. I uh, went in, got myself some Culver's, came out, and nobody's here. The charger session was actually cheaper than it was last time, despite having a neighbor. So I wonder if Tesla take the charge rate into account when they adjust your pricing. Boy, I'm going to gain some weight if I keep charging here and keep on eating custard, but sure is good. On my way back to Rochester now, got an 83% on my battery, and... Uh, 135 miles to go. Alright, here we go. Car wash mode. It, uh, well, it disables a bunch of stuff. There's all the thing car wash mode does. I wanted to give it a bath, it's at 847 miles, so it's had a tough life so far. You can see that the paint protection has done a good job. The little sliver they put on just before the rear wheels actually is showing a lot of dirt that builds up there, so I don't know why that spot attracts dirt, but it's a good thing they put that PPF there. Didn't look like the front bumper saw much action, but uh, all around the car it's, it's difficult to keep a white car clean, I'm finding, so gonna give it a car wash before it's garaged for uh, two weeks here while I'm traveling and not have to worry about the salt getting at her.